We're welcoming Emmy Daniel. He runs the Evangelizing Asia for Christ Ministry and Orphanage. He accepted Jesus at 16 after his faith in Hinduism was challenged because of his older brother's conversion. Daniel will tell you about his nothing short of dramatic conversion to Christ that impacted him so much that he set out with a newfound purpose and vision of global evangelism and strengthening churches. Daniel, what a privilege it is to have you join us. Such a joy for me to be here. I'd like our viewers to have a, a background, if you will, on your family, your siblings. Tell us about that. I, am, I was born in a Hindu family in India, yes. in South India. Uh, I have four older sisters and uh, two older brothers. As I was born in a Hindu family, I have seen worshipping the idols. My dad, my dad took me to the temples. We had a home temple and community temple. So my dad asked me to assist him to do temple priest work with him. My older brother also was a temple priest. We went to the temples in India. We have a temple name called Tirupati Temple, which is 450 acres of land, large temples. I went to those temples with my grandfather, with my father, with my brothers. One day, my older brother got a gospel tracts. In that gospel tracts, it is written, True God. While he was doing temple priest work, he got that gospel tracts. He took that gospel tracts and he started to read. After reading that, he began to ask the question, what is this? Something is written in these tracks. True God. Is all our gods is not a God then? All our idols? Our temples? Then he went to the Christian evangelist. He got a New Testament. He got a Bible. And he started to read that. And his, after reading, his life was changed. He went to the Christians. He asked so many questions. He stopped temple priest work. Now, there are a lot of gods in the Hindu faith. Yes, in India, we have 330 million gods. Wow, wow. Another very important feature of a Hindu family is the closeness of the family. So for your brother to become a Christian, mm -hmm. that had a profound impact mm -hmm. on your family. Um, yes. Tell us about that. When my brother became a Christian, and uh, my dad was a community leader, when he started to pray and join with the Christians, stop temple priest work, and uh, when we came to know that, we thought that that is going to damage our dad's testimony, our family testimony. Myself and my sister, actually we plan to take that Bible and burn the Bible, then he will forget about this new God, Jesus Christ, and he forget about this Bible, and he will join with us again to the temple. But that is where, when I was trying to burn the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, myself and my older sisters, that is where Jesus came in my life and divinely entered in my life and he caught me. From, the, from there, my life began. Now, this is where you get into a powerful testimony from you. When you first received Christ, and it was in a miraculous way, you had an illness mm -hmm. that struck you, a mysterious one. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. So. When I was going to high school, it was in my mind that my brother became a Christian. Myself and my older sister, we were planning to burn the Bible. Here, a carpenter. I know that carpenter from the childhood. He used to come and work in our house. Here he comes. Even I have done a temple priest work for him in the home temple and community temple. Here he comes and gives me gospel tracts. I was so mad at him. I said, you are not a Catholic priest, you are not a pastor, you are a ordinary man. Why you are doing this? I was so mad at him. When I, I told these things, he, he said, if you don't want these gospel tracts, leave me alone. Let me go. He left the place. You know what happened to me in the same spot? I had shivering and I had feverish. I was not able to walk to the school on that day. Then I went to a near a house and I started to lay down there. By the way, my dad came and he asked me why I didn't, I didn't go to the school. Then he asked me to go to my sister's house. I went to my sister's house. All night I couldn't sleep, throwing up, throwing up. Then I was taken to the hospital, district hospital. I was in the hospital for two and a 
of months. And given blood transfusions too with this mysterious illness you had. The doctor could not understand what sickness I have. Just throwing up, throwing up. They put me 120 bottle IVs. All my veins got damaged in my hands. Then they put it in my legs. So you were resisting the Holy Spirit. But then something happened. Tell us what that was. So when I was in the hospital, my brother came once in a week and told me Jesus is real God. Believe him. Yes. But I had the spirit of rejection. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't want to hear that name. And uh, I don't want to hear the name of Jesus Christ. He will go away. Then he will come back with the pastors and brothers with the Bible. They will come and ask me, can we pray for you? But I said, I don't want to see the Christians. You people get out of from this hospital. I had spirit of rejection. But after two and a half months, 120 bottle IVs, two bottle blood, all bed sores. While I was in the hospital, I was praying to all my gods, the temple which I used to go in India, the idol worship what I did, temple priest work what I, was, I did from the childhood. But after two and a half months, one day a doctor came and said, we have no hope for you. That means I am going to die. When doctor said that I'm going to die, I had the fear in my heart. If I die today, my body will be kept in the tomb. Who is the God who is going to welcome me there? You know, after the death, some God has to welcome me there, though I was doing a temple priest work. So out of desperation, you did something. Tell so us what that was. What I did, so when doctor said I'm going to die, the fear came in my heart. Though I was a temple priest from the childhood, mm -hmm. I had the fear in my heart to face the death. Then the thoughts came in my heart. Here I am praying to so many gods, only one God I am rejecting. That God is this Jesus Christ, which is my own brother is mm -hmm. trying to introduce to me. Then in the night, without asking my dad, I come to a conclusion. If this God is a true God, he will talk to me. Then I decided in the hospital, I said, Lord Jesus, if you are a true God, reveal me your truth. I humble myself before you. I submit it to you. When I prayed that small prayer, you know what happened to me? In the hospital, I felt like a tube light wow. went to my heart. After two and a half months, I slept in, the, in that hospital peacefully. Wow, talk about God's strength being made perfect in weakness. Daniel, there are people watching that they don't have the Hindu history. They don't, they can identify with your personal story, but you have been evangelizing the world. And there's a fellow that, a, a well-known missionary that gave your book a write-up, in fact, that did the foreword. Mm. And this is Blackaby, Blackaby Ministries. Here's what he said, and I'm gonna quote this. He said, our Western churches are often irrelevant, insipid, passionless, boring, and dying, unquote. There's a reason he said this. Why, why did he? Why did he say that? When we see around the world, when we preach the gospel, there are persecutions. Yes. Even I was being almost murdered. You've been beaten. Beaten. And my right knee was, they want to remove my kneecap some of Antichrist group people. But the power of God, the Holy Spirit, did not stop me there. So when we come to a point of comfort in our life, we reach the point, there is a stop for the ministry. Or we are not taking it serious to take the gospel around the world. What keeps you strong? Because I know what to be as a Hindu man, Hindu temple priest, yes. I know what it is to be following the Jesus Christ. When I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, I felt Jesus entered in my heart divinely. From the hospital, I went to my home. I stood in our land. When air started to blow, the branches of the tree started to move. I felt like all the trees talking to me, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus like that. I feel the power of God in my heart. This God, Jesus Christ, is a living, powerful, true God. And you have certainly seen it. You have a, a visionary heart and you're, 
you're ministering throughout the world and you're helping orphans. What do you tell Westerners that are discouraged and they haven't seen that kind of a persecution and haven't seen the kind of a power that you've seen and you're serving the Lord? What do you tell them to encourage them in their daily pain as they try to get out of bed on a daily basis? What I want to say that the God, what you have here in North America, the Jesus Christ is a living, powerful God. When we talk to him faithfully, when we go to him in a prayer, he talks to us. He is very careful to listen who is kneeling down on the globe to seeking his face who is willing to cry out to him, to pray to him, is always very close to listen to us. Daniel, your book, it's dynamic. It's, it's an easy read for people. It's, it's powerful and it declares the power of God. And soon I want to tell our viewers where, where they can get a copy of this excellent book. But before I do that, can you look at the camera and say a prayer for those watching that they could be renewed in the spirit? Do you want me to pray? Yes. Yes. Okay. Father, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for this day. I pray and I ask the blessing upon those who are watching on this TV. I pray and we release the anointing of the Holy Spirit, those who are listening. Father God, I pray your word says, know you not that you are the temple of God. The Spirit of God dwells in you. We pray and ask the blessing upon everyone, those who are listening. Also, I ask the blessing upon the nation of Canada and I ask the blessing upon this ministry. We thank you and we praise you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, Daniel, I'm going to be telling our viewers, you watching, where you can get a copy of this very powerful book. It's entitled, From the Temple to the Nations, and that's available on our e-store. You can find it at crossroads.ca or by calling one 800 265-3100. Daniel, your heart's a blessing. It's a blessing to those you meet mm. and of course a glory to the Lord you serve. I want to thank you so much you for coming welcome. our way. Thank you so much.